We have a very interesting subject for today. Over many years, directors have discovered different styles and techniques of editing. They have realised how the audience feels when watching the movie. <clears throat> they took into consideration the purposes of which the story is told and how to engage the viewer in the drama. They do this through using pace, which creates excitement. Many shots have been established through the years of work to engage the audience view on the film. Now over to my colleague, who will give a few examples of improving editing over time. In the early part of the 20th century, Edwin Porter is most famous for directing the film The Great Train Robbery in 1903. Edwin Porter uses long clips and with hardly any cuts. Compared to the modern day film industry, there was little variety of length of edits and types of shots. All the shots are stationary shots. This kind of filming had a negative impact on the audience experience because they found it harder to follow. In the film with the final, it shows the whole clip from the inside of the bedroom and then goes back and shows it again from the whole outside, but then replaying the clip so it goes back in time. This makes it hard for the audience to follow. In modern day editing, we would use cross cutting to show a difference in the relationship between the final of travelling and the woman in the house. He tries to use parallel editing but ends up going back in time. Parallel editing has adapted in modern day. An example of this is Vantage Pod 2008. This film shows different points of views of witnesses in different situations during the attempt of the assassination of the American president in Spain. Ten years later, we have D.W. Griffith. Uh, in 1897, Griffith set out to pursue a career both acting and writing in theatre. For most of the part, he was unsuccessful, but reluctantly, he agreed. Uh, to be in a new motion picture medium for Edwin Porter. Um, this was the Ed Edison Company. Uh, Griffith was eventually offered a job at the Financial Struggling American Mutoscope and Biograph, Biograph, where he directed over 450 short films. His films used a lot more cutting and final editing. The pace of his videos were racy, and compared to Edwin, he uses various long shots and no cuts. Some clips with D.W. Griffith. Uh, are sure and then cut immediately uh, to the other characters uh, and all the rooms. Uh, this, would, this would have been a lot of planning and hard work for the video. Uh, compared to D.W. Griffith, he uses a complete different variety of shots, uh, camera shots and also camera angles, uh, this compared to Edward. And um, D.W. uses uh, lots of cuts really just to tell the story of what he wants to put what he wants to put across to the audience. Um, uh, in the film Rom Romain Romana, uh, you see a man playing a guitar and the parallel edit to a woman staggering, walking across the screen from left to right. Left to right. And um, then when there is another edit back to the man and she comes uh, on the right to the left, uh, this breaks the 180 degree rule, which uh, the audience will understand what is happening through the clip. Bergman. 
Finally ending with a tight close-up of a key tucked into her hand. <laughs> All right, you got dirty minds, guys. Jesus, guys. And this whole cup. Blimey. Yummy. Hitchcock uses the technique called parallel editing because it shows the clips are happening at the same time. Parallel editing makes the audience understand what's happening at certain points of the film. It also helps us understand the story and engages the viewer in the story. It does this by showing us different points of view. Strangers on the Train is a great clip which shows the great use of parallel editing and the 180 degree rule. The 180 degree rule shows they are going to meet at a certain point. The parallel editing is where two things are happening at once and they come together. The audience will understand what's happening because they are coming together. During the famous shower scene from Psycho, I counted, personally, 56 to 58 different cuts. There were short long shots at the beginning and at the end, but in the middle there was around 20 fast split second cuts during the murder. This film, was, this film called Psycho was a very famous film because it was one of the first horror films. The film completely scared the audience. Each edit is around 3 to 5 seconds during the start of the piece and it changes to a split second edit during the killing. This was never done before. These were fast to give the film pace and make the audience scared. This is why the film was brand new and nobody had seen anything like it. Alfred Hitchcock was a legendary in his experiments with editing to create suspense for the audience. We almost feel like we are being stabbed. Steven Allen Spielberg. Born December 18, 1946. He was an American film director, screenwriter, film producer, video game designer, and a studio executive. In a career spanning four decades, Spielberg's films have covered many, many, many themes and genres. His theatrical World War II film, Saving Private Ryan, about a group of US soldiers led by Captain Miller, played by John Hanks, sent to bring home a, a paratrooper whose three older brothers were killed in the last 24 hours of action in France. This film was a large and generated over 429 million, that's million dollars. The famous beach landing scene demonstrates all the editing techniques we looked at before in this video. There is a cut where the men go onto the beach and the camera dips up and down in the water like this. This is effective because it's the sound cuts when the camera is in the water and when the camera comes out of the water you can hear the wind, the shouting, the screaming, the shooting. It's incredible. And you were one of the soldiers and that's what Spielberg wanted to do across. This makes the audience feel like they're the ones going underwater, which engages the viewer in the scene. The camera is then very shaky, and it makes, it makes you feel like you are there, and the camera is running along the beach to make it feel like it's you, as a more audience member. The effectiveness of the man under the water needing to take a breath, this makes the audience sort of take a breath themselves, like a... <sighs> the long high shot from the bunker makes the soldiers on the beach look small and the men higher up are superior.